Hi golfers, Nick here from Golf Tech Singapore. Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the X Factor. I'm going to talk about the X Factor in the golf swing. So I've got an article here, I uh, saw this a couple of weeks ago. It came up on Twitter, on the BBC website. So you can see a picture of Tiger Woods just talking about how the injury problems he's had over the years and how the X Factor type golf swing can lead to those back issues. Uh, you can also see I've got the 3D motion measurements on me here at Golf Tech today. We're going to be looking at some numbers. We're going to be looking at how what happens with the rotation of the body, especially when we use these numbers. Um, but I just wanted to talk about this article first of all, which you may not have seen. If you've not, I'll put the link in the description below so you can see it. So just a study uh, some US doctors have done uh, about the modern X Factor. So the way the X Factor is sort of explained um, is a way to create power. And it's about how you separate the hip turn and the shoulder turn. So you have minimal hip turn and maximum shoulder turn to create resistance. So up on the screen here, I've got a um, presentation we had from Dr. Bush last year. You may have seen some footage I had from Spain last year. Um, and Dr. Bush knows so much about, not just about the golf swing, but also about the body. And he talks a lot about the elasticity of the body. And elastic object stores mechanical energy and exerts an opposite force to return to its original position, e.g. a rubber band. So if I take this rubber band, it pings back. It's very different to the human body. The body does not exhibit elastic properties. So it's not consistent with human mechanics. If you take a club, swing to the top of your backswing, you can hold that position. You're not gonna just spring back like an elastic band. So that's what they're talking about. And I think a lot of, there's a lot of misconceptions in golf about how um, by creating this separation if you like between the hip and the shoulder turn it creates this coiled spring to unwind unwind but actually look at the best players they actually they have rotation of the hips and the shoulders to maximize their power up on the screen here i've got um you might recognize the golfer there that's michelle Wee. so she's been prone to a lot of injuries over the years and she's probably one of the best models if you like for the x-factor type swing um, she does create a lot of power from the, lady, from the ladies tour, but she could probably create a lot more if she had more hip turn. But also, more importantly, she could probably avoid it all, a lot of these injuries she's had. So uh, there's a little diagram here as well about the rotation. I've talked about this before in other videos, but if you, if you sit there and you just turn your shoulders without turning your hips, the maximum amount of rotation the average person get, can get is about 30 degrees. So if you think about that in the golf swing, if you don't turn your pelvis, you, your maximum turn without putting strain on your body is going to be around about 30 degrees. So an average tour player, I'm going to be looking at some data today, does have 90 degrees of shoulder turn in the backswing. So where does that come from? So it doesn't come from not turning the hips, that's for sure. So we're going to be looking at some swings, I'm going to do some swings, look at some motion measurements, just to see the difference between my X Factor swing and my normal golf swing. I think another important thing to talk about here is how we create power in the golf swing. So I think there's a lot of misconceptions. So um, I'm gonna put this diagram on the screen so you can see it clearly. Uh, on the left here, it's kind of like the old school theory of how you create power. So uh, load the glute, get behind the golf ball, load up the right side, shift weight to right, then back to the left, slide the head down the target line, keep the club face on the target line for as long as possible, take the club straight back and swing down the line of the target. We know that's not true, you've seen the videos, you've looked at the grid and stuff like that. But where does the power actually come from? So, golf is a side-on sport. It's not a linear sport. We don't play golf down the line, we stand at the side of the ball with a club that's on an angle. We've talked about the natural plane angle of a golf club, it's not a straight line down the target line, it actually moves around the body. So, other examples of other side-on sports would be soccer kicking, playing hockey, throwing a discus or a hammer throw they're all side motions to create power on an arc, not in a straight line. So the power comes from angular momentum, and it's the power of the circle. So that's where the power comes from. It doesn't come from shifting back and forth, it comes from depth in the swing, swinging around your body in behind you, and that is helped by the rotation. If you don't turn your body, your swing is likely to go upwards. So we're looking at the two different swings today. So I'm gonna start off I'm going to do my X Factor swing, so I'm going to try and I'm going to put good swings as much as possible on this ball. I'm not going to try and do different swings. I'm going to try and hit the ball as best I can, but I'm going to have 
one where I try and avoid turning my hips and just turn my shoulders and then I'm just going to do my normal goal swing and then we can look at the numbers and see what the difference is. I've set the camera up just so you can see what's happening on the screen here uh, while I'm hitting these shots. So on the screen on the left I've got hip turn and the right I've got shoulder turn. So I'll just show you what happens. So if I make the movements I would in the goal swing, you'll see how these numbers change to close as I go back. So you can see 56 hip turn, 87 shoulder turn. And if I swing through, Again, they change the open, so 90 degree hip turn, 90 degree shoulder turn roughly. So in the golf swing, you'll be measuring how the shoulders and the hips close and how they open in the follow through. Uh, at Golf Tech, we've got loads of data collected from tour pros. So we're gonna be looking at what they do and what I do with these two swings. So the first one's gonna be X Factor Swing, limited hip turn, but trying to turn my shoulders as much as possible. Uh, and then the next one's gonna be my normal golf swing. So first up, we're going to go X Factor. So let's try and hit this as best I can, but without turning my hips, which is not easy. Okay, not a bad shot. So I've really tried to limit uh, my hip turn there. So it's going to be interesting to see that data in a second. So I'm just hitting a seven nine here. So I've not hit that very far. 142 yards, so I'd expect a bit more out of that with my normal swing. Okay, so next one's going to be my normal goal swing, so I'm going to try and turn my hips as I would do normally and my shoulders as, as I would do normally and see the difference. Okay, a little bit of a draw. And so you can see a difference in distance. That felt easier for me, I felt freer. I didn't deliberately try and hit that first one bad, it's just it didn't feel very comfortable to me. So um, carried 168. So a lot better the second time around, ball speed jumped up about 20 miles an hour. So you can see there the difference in the two shots. Let's take a look at data, take a look at the motion measurements, see what the difference is. Let me hit the two shots there. I tried to exaggerate that first one as much as possible, and you can see with the data here, we're just gonna look at the face on view to start with. So my hip turn is virtually non-existent. Nine degrees of hip turn in the backswing. You look at the tour pros, they're averaging about 45. Now you can see I had 46. So you can see on the screen there, that's come up a green number. So that means that's within the range of what the tour players do. So tour players are turning their hips on average 45 degrees. They're not turning them nine degrees. Then if you move on to the shoulder turn, my shoulder turn, you can see it's come up in yellow on the left, which is 75. So that's a little bit closer to what the tour players do uh, than the hip turn. So a red number would be uh, worse than yellow. Yellow is a little bit closer to where the tour players would be at green. Uh, you can see my shoulder turn is actually 97. It's gone blue, which is actually past the range of what the tour players do. So a tour player would generally be uh, around about 90. So they'd be like on average 45 and 90 hip turn to shoulder turn. Um, you can see on the left there, 9 degrees of hip turn and 75 degrees of shoulder turn. So there's like a 65 degree difference between my hips and my shoulders in that left hand picture and there is about 50 degrees of difference in the right hand picture. So I've effectively, I've created more of an X factor on the left hand picture than I have on the right hand picture. You can see um, players that do the X factor, they'll probably be a bit further around than this. Uh, but it was, it, I tried to do that, exaggerate that as much as possible, but I've definitely created a more separation between my shoulders and my hips in that left hand picture than I did in the right hand picture. And if you look at those two pictures, the tour player is going to look a lot more like the picture on the right. Also notice um, the ball speed down the bottom here. Um, so 96 miles an hour compared to 119 with a 7 iron. So I, I couldn't get my arm round because I wasn't turning my shoulders enough. Uh, there's also another measurement that we just bring up quickly is the um, shoulder bend. So it's 30 degrees forward as opposed to one degree forward here. And that's basically if I took a line out of my chest, that's my chest still pointing downwards. Whereas you look at the tour players, they're going to be about zero at this point. So their chest extends on the way back. We've talked about this a lot in other videos, but just to highlight that as well. So the best players. They turn their hips 45, they turn their shoulders 90, and they come out of the forward bend to zero. Okay, so I've just switched the camera around so you can see uh, the down the line view here. 
again the same sort of things so you set same numbers obviously uh, but look at the how the body changes so if you look at the difference in my knee flex compared to the one on the left so this is another myth that gets thrown about is how you should keep the right knee bend keeping the right knee bend restricts your hip turn when I was doing the x-factor swing I tried to keep my right knee bend as much as possible because I knew if I did that I wouldn't turn my hips so you watch the best players you'll see a change in knee flex you'll see the left knee bend forward the back one straighten to some degree I'm not talking about locking it straight but it should straighten to some degree and the left one should flex forward that's going to help you turn your hips not by keeping the knees in the same place again that's going to be putting stress on the joints not good for injuries. I think it's pretty clear to see not only does the x-factor resistance model cause injury also makes it hard to create power. Obviously in this picture here I was exaggerating it a little bit just to highlight it for the video you might see some players have a little bit more rotation than that with the x-factor resistance model but it was obvious I had, I had a bigger difference on the left there between my shoulders and my hips than I did on the right but that's not what the best players do. They turn those hips 45, they turn those shoulders 90 and that's what helps them create depth and power in the golf swing and also to help prevent injury as well in the long term. So golfers, thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. If you've got any comments, post them in the box below and we'll see you again soon.